I am not going to pretend like the full tilt action in this movie isn't one of the best things it has going for it. And starting off with the Avengers already together mid-mission, kicking butt is a solid win. This entire opening set piece is quality action fun that is pretty easy to follow even if this is your first MCU film. Yep. Language. I should hire Captain America to write for cinema wins. In a lot like the first film, every Avenger gets to avenge in their own effective way. Sir, the city is taking fire. Well, we know Strucker's not going to worry about civilian casualties. So much of this film is a response to fan outrage over civilian collateral damage in the Avengers, as well as making sure the MCU doesn't get Man of Steel levels of hate for killing innocents. I mean, Stark has a whole squadron of autonomous suits to protect people. In continuity, it's also something they've learned from New York City and the time in between then and now. They have to be after the scepter. Tying into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a welcome reward to those of us watching that show, while at the same time doesn't alienate anyone not caught up. But seriously, catch up. It's a great show. No surrender! I am going to surrender. <laughs> we even get some comedy gold from our villains. We'll miss you, Whedon. You didn't see that coming? Quicksilver's intro into this universe had some big shoes to fill. Everyone will have their preference, but I can safely say the MCU did not fill Magneto's son. Wait. Hulk. Looks like they're lining up. Well, they're excited. <laughs> Who cares if they can't decide whether the shield absorbs or deflects? That's more teamwork and an amazing shot. Please be a secret. Yay. Job satisfaction. Can't say if it was deliberate, but the last bit of Hulk green to leave Banner's body is through his jugular. Nice touch. You have to be faster than that. <laughs> Tony's vision may be the most compelling out of all of Scarlet Witch's mind games, especially given that it's right before the title card. As Tony even says later, it seems like more than just a nightmare and maybe something that actually happens in Infinity War. And it's the main reason Tony moves forward with Ultron's creation. Based on Scarlet Witch's reaction, I'd say she wasn't expecting to see that either. And the follow-up title card is so completely different from the first. The score sets the tone of the impending doom that is Ultron, while his portion of the title card actually overtakes the Avengers. And ooh, is it good? Signaling the end of the prologue the second Tony grabs the scepter, Ultron is inevitable. Therefore, Age of Ultron. It's of hell are filled with the screams of his victims. <laughs> uh, but not the screams of the dead, of course. No, no, uh, tales of sprained deltoids and, and, uh, and gout. Sugarcoating. Mental manipulation. He's fast and she's weird. Dumbing it down for the old guy. Pretending to need this guy really brings the team together. Haha, -ha, Black Widow laughs in your Hawkeye hating faces. Keeping continuity in this universe has to be a huge undertaking. And the MCU constantly impresses me. At the end of Iron Man 3, I guess I need to say spoilers if you're the one person on the planet who has seen Age of Ultron, but not Iron Man 3, Tony initiates his clean slate protocol and starts down a new path. That path is to stop responding to threats out of fear and to create a world where the Avengers are no longer needed. That is exactly the plan. That's his main goal in this film. Ultron is his, albeit flawed, solution. Peace in our time. A failing to create Ultron montage is the fastest way to doom the world. What is this? What is this, please? Politeness. I don't get it. The mission. G give me a second. James Spader, man. Could there have been a better cast? He was born to be an AI villain. And he blinks into existence in a very human way, ironically. Questioning his purpose and then quickly interpreting history and coming to his own conclusions. I'm like, boom, you looking for this? I mean, what did Rudy expect? It's like telling a neurosurgeon how you once applied a Band-Aid really, really adequately. Boom, you looking for this? <laughs> Knowing your audience. Egg shell shield. Ha! Stan Lee got so drunk he forgot he wasn't playing Stan Lee. You both deserve a win. Couldn't agree more, Cap. All right, so I, if I lift it, I, I then rule Asgard? Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, that look on Thor's face. This whole everyone try to lift the hammer scene is such a perfect way of making these characters real. Just hanging out at a party trying to see who's worthy. And for the record, my theory is that Cap could actually lift the hammer and will eventually, but once he realized he could, he decided not to for Thor's sake. You're all not worthy. Also, vision shadowing. Tony Stark, Iron Man suitless, still joining in the fight is a win. More teamwork. That was dramatic. <laughs> There's only one path to peace. The Avengers extinction. Ultron brings up a thought process that comes up in the future. Would the world be safer without superheroes? Does their very existence invite challengers? Ultron may have been onto something. <laughs> Timing advice. How are you guys planning on beating them? Together. We'll lose. And we'll do that together too. I love you, Cap. That's why you've come to end the Avengers. I've come to save the world. But also, yeah. Robert California level honesty. 
Everyone's plan is not to kill them. That little throwaway line from Quicksilver does a lot to explain why the twins never actually try to kill the Avengers. Neither Strucker or Ultron want to make them martyrs. In order to make them go extinct, he needs Scarlet Witch to tear them apart from the inside. One of the biggest complaints this film gets is that it advertises upcoming MCU films instead of telling its own story. I get it. But if you don't know who Clow Claw is, does this make you throw your hands up in the air and yell at the screen? What does it matter? He's an arms dealer that stole some important stuff from Wakanda. Wakanda. Comic fans hear Black Panther. Everyone else may at least hear Vibranium. Or just bad guy. He looks like a bad guy. Or the next missile I send you will come very much faster. I guess it shouldn't have been much of a surprise, but for myself, having never seen much more than Andy Serkis than Gollum, Caesar, and Snoke, all mocap work, I was really impressed that he's actually an actor. Dark is not <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so. Oh. I'm sure that's gonna be okay. Apologizing. Also, Star Wars reference. Also, Sonic emitter shadowing. I know you've suffered. <laughs> Captain America. Pretending you could live without a war. It's so appropriate that Cap disgusts Ultron, since Cap is really his antithesis. What's the vibranium for? I'm glad you asked that, because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. Ultron punishes Tony for trying to trick him into monologuing. First look at Ultron's strength and abilities, and he is powerful. You are not worthy. Another fun reflection on what's been said by Ultron. Even at a party, Cap can only see war. Reusing the Hulk gets mind-controlled, manipulated into breaking stuff is a little annoying. And technically, it's the same exact thing messing with him since Scarlet Witch's powers came from the Mind Gem. But we get Hulkbuster armor for not rolling our eyes too hard. Snorri Cam on the Hulk? That's some cinematic sorcery. Veronica, give me a hand. Fun fact, Veronica is so named since in the Archie comics, she's the opposite of Betty, who was once Banner's love interest. I told you fist bumps were dangerous. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> not even one part of this fight is a letdown. Even the comedy breaks. I'm sorry. And collapsing a building on top of the Hulk is pretty spectacular. Friendship. Such an important moment. Ultron has basically succeeded in tearing the Avengers apart through Wanda, and each member really lets us feel it. Honey? Mom? Hawkeye, yeah. He finally gets a life and a family. Although it's a sad realization that this is probably the biggest standalone Hawkeye film we'll ever get, it's a welcome and humanizing effort for the Avengers. These are Look at your face. smaller agents. Oh my goodness. Something Cap realizes he may never get at the very least with the person he wants it with. You don't think they need me? I think they do, which is a lot scarier. So true, he gets shoved under the rug too often. He's a man with his feet in two separate worlds, more so than the rest, and it's great he finally gets some recognition. No, it's last project. Man, did they set him up to die. Had me going. You're not a match for him, Cap. Thanks, Martin. Maybe true, but apparently Cap can hold his own. Stop. Black Widow makes dropping out of a Quinjet on a motorcycle into dense traffic cooler, somehow. Man, I just love teamwork. To recap, Cap just bounced off this car, landed on his shield, started running in stride, then surfed this car until he could jump back onto the truck. If that's not a win. Roadrunner reference? Face propulsion. Please, don't do this. Oh, that response. More like a parent or a loved one who feels betrayed. Such depth to Ultron, very much thanks to Spader. Quick silver style saving the innocent. DJ Bruce Lee is always a win. Seriously, someone give me that shirt. You know how impressed I get by reflections in animated films. But here's one in a live action film. Jarvis is CGI, so they definitely had to add that reflection into Banner's glasses. Attention to detail. All right, so it seems a tad insane to use Jarvis to create another AI, but, but, in their defense, Jarvis has been blocking, fighting, and beating Ultron the whole time without even knowing he was doing it. Jarvis has been beating him from inside without knowing it. It's clearly in his DNA to do the right thing. And like Vision says, I am on the side of life. I hoped you would. I wanted to show you. I don't have anyone else. Ultron's split personality between his human moments and then complete homicidal insanity makes him an unpredictable villain. What? You didn't see that coming? <laughs> Call back. Did Scarlet Witch just John McClane a spell through herself at Banner? Now let's go back to the scene that so many take issue with. Another future MCU setup scene that I have to ask, who is it hurting? You're not excited for the next Thor movie? I am. But really, they've been setting this up since his Scarlet Witch vision in which he sees vision. Thor goes to the Water of Sight because he wants to see the rest of that dream. Seeing the Infinity Stones bursting out of their cases, starting to understand their power and everything he learns from the water directly leads to him unilaterally deciding to bring vision to life. So, no Ragnarok tease, no vision. Oh, so cool. For the record, all joking aside, is this not magic? Does it matter? 
Say it's telekinesis. Say vision can control his density and float. Again, semantics. An oversimplification of Thor's explanation, but everything is magic to someone. Red School claims the cube was science, but he had no idea there was an infinity stone inside. He just knew it was an energy source. So for all intents and purposes, magic. I still like the idea that even though everything is magic to someone, like Thor says later, there's someone who can explain everything. I think I'll take one of those too. And not what you are, and not what you intended. I loved Jarvis. I will miss Jarvis. But, number one, Paul Bettany's voice when he's Vision is so silky rich I'd like to hire him to read me to sleep every night. And number two, good for you, Paul Bettany. I don't know if it was the plan from the beginning, but dang it if he doesn't deserve this role. There may be no way to make you trust me, but we need to go. Speaking of trusting me, just about the best payoff to one of the best scenes in the film. Iron Man's the one he's waiting for. That's true, he hates you the most. Even more honesty. Odds are we'll be riding into heavy fire. And that's what we signed up for. The people of Sokovia, we didn't. So our priority is getting them out. We're not the man of steel. We're under attack. Clear the city, now. Persistence. Ultron thinks we're monsters, that we're what's wrong with the world. This isn't just about beating him, it's about whether he's right. These questions, these questions that Ultron poses, that they answer as well as they can in this film through trying to protect the civilians, but ultimately it's been a running theme through this franchise since Iron Man started Iron Manning. Purge me from your computers, turn my own flesh against me. It means nothing. Usually speech wins go to the good guys, but Ultron's apocalypse speech is about as chilling as they come. When the dust settles, the only thing living in this world will be metal. Hulk smile. Friday. The vibranium core's got a magnetic field. That's what's keeping the rock together. Like I said, we'll miss Jarvis. But Friday's soothing Irish accent is a pleasing replacement. You get killed, walk it off. Speaking of speech wins. Okay, look, the city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. Recognizing the ridiculousness of the situation and turning it into a motivational speech is what's great about Hawkeye. As was established on the farm, he's the only Avenger with a foot in the real world and therefore grounds the whole scenario for the viewer. One-handed salmon ladder. You'll never Never what? You didn't finish! Friendly taunting. Teamwork. Yes, sir. Black Widow using Cap Shield. Yeah, Mom, I'm in another Marvel movie. I know, I know. Well, actually, it is a countdown again. But this time I actually launched stuff. I'm running out of things to say. Are you ready? Vision. How can you possibly hope to stop me? Like the old man said, together. Sometimes we forget that this is a comic book movie. And then set pieces like this bring us right back as if they've been lifted right from the panels, which some of these actually have been. But man, does it play. No matter how jaded and cynical I become, I pray that I can enjoy sequences like this until the day I die. Because if you never feel that little kid inside you jumping up and down in front of the screen, you're watching movies wrong. There's a word. Squad labor? Crew effort? Company exertion? Who cares? The word is awesome. Also, Hulk. Did Vision just Neo that Ultron bot's trinity? Yeah, he gon' die. I love that Natasha has a connection with both Hulk and Banner. And ironically enough, it's generally the Hulk that's more receptive to her. He didn't see that coming. Self-sacrifice callback. And such a powerful payoff sacrifice too. Quicksilver has been this arrogant, angry kid throughout the movie, mostly looking to get revenge on Stark. Once he sees the helicarrier and realizes, This is shield? Something changes in him. On the other side, Hawkeye has pretty much hated him since day one. So Quicksilver laying down his life for the guy who should have died based on every movie trope set up is really stirring. <laughs> mm, this is mine now. Fun fact, Ultron's chest ripped open is the same shape as the broken shield from Tony's vision. Ooh, they're gonna fall in love. Also saving your new friend. Please be going to Sakaar, please be going to Sakaar. Oh no. Maybe Asgard? All right, that's fine. It's a privilege to be among them. You're unbearably naive. Well, I was born yesterday. The rules have changed. We're dealing with something new. A little good old fashioned banter expectation subversion. Are they wrapping up the insane events of this movie with some philosophical waxings? No, they're comparing vision to an elevator. 
But if you put the hammer in an elevator, it would still go up. Elevator's not worthy. There's nothing that can't be explained. See that? Even Thor thinks he'll be able to explain Doctor Strange. Age of Ultron is another case of audience expectations setting a film up for failure. Is it as good as the first one? Eh, probably not. Could anything ever be as good or as cool as the first time that we saw the Avengers assemble? I dare say it can't. And there's such a fine line for filmmakers between giving us more of what we've proven to like while not borrowing too much and straying far enough from the original to keep it fresh and new, but not so far that you upset your core. So often it's either The Empire Strikes Back or Highlander 2 The Quickening. My point is that I don't envy anyone tasked with making a sequel to a smash hit. It's really no wonder directors like Joss and JJ walk away from these franchises. There are some issues for sure, but this movie isn't the failure follow-up everyone touts it to be. Now let's talk about this much maligned film. While Ultron is the main antagonist of the film, he's actually less of a villain than the Winter Soldier. That's not going away anytime soon. I'm just messing with you. But he's a villain in a similar way to AI villains of the past. If peace is the goal for Earth, as Banner puts it, the only people threatening the planet would be people. So protection against aliens is only part of the solution. And Ultron is just the combination of the Mind Stone and Tony's aspirations for peace in my time as Ultron parrots back. The creator-created theme comes up a few times, but it's more under the surface. Is Stark actually the villain of this story? Take Captain America, for example. Things are usually pretty black and white for Cap, so when someone asks him, Ultron can't tell the difference between saving the world and destroying it. Where do you think he gets that? It really throws him for a loop, which, in combination with Captain America the Winter Soldier, sets up Civil War perfectly. This movie succeeded in so many more ways than it failed. I remember when I saw the first trailer for this film. I turned to my wife and I said, I really wish I could show this movie trailer to my 12-year-old self. He'd lose his mind. And that's the response a lot of this movie got out of me in theaters. Exciting action and fairly evenly spread time with our heroes, bouncing all over the planet, a definite upgrade from the mostly New York City Avengers, fictional Sokovia, South Africa, South Korea, each location added something new to the unique set pieces. And every location is stunning. Overall, an exquisitely beautiful film that may even surpass the first one in humor. The last I saw him, an Ultron was sitting on him. I'm, yeah, he'll be missed, that quick little bastard. I miss him already. It was definitely a straightforward save the world plot. I'm sure there are ways to weave a more complex narrative, but with this many stars, it would be easy to mess it up. Or even worse, for people to think you messed it up, even if you didn't. In the end, Age of Ultron gave us more of what we love and expanded the team and universe in an organic way. With a compelling, albeit likely one-off villain. But compelling, did I mention that? James Spader was perfect. And they used it to make a frisbee. But the entire cast really drew me in. Second Avengers movie in and the dynamic between our heroes has only gotten better and more fluid since the first. The hammer scene as well as the first real disagreement solidified them as friends, but also real people with individual minds and personal convictions. And I'll say it one more time. I'm also really excited for upcoming solo and ensemble films. The joke is that this movie is just a long advertisement for Cap 3, Thor 3, and Black Panther. But I think people forget that just because someone is engaged in something that sets up the future doesn't mean that it's not affecting the here and now. Remember when we used to get excited about an expanding interconnected universe? I still do, and you'll never convince me that this film suffered because of it. Eventually, they'll run out of main heroes and we'll finally get some lesser hero solo films. Like a Black Widow rom-com with Banner. No? How about Hawkeye of Green Gables? I'd watch that. Actually, a little spin-off series led by Maria Hill titled How I Met Your Coulson? Eh? Who hasn't felt the fire between those two? Just give Colby Smulders more work. Come on! Is this the third video in a row I've talked about her? Oof. Hope there's no Canada haters out there. But come on, she's a badass. Steve, you said a bad language word. You're so cute. Adam, I'm Banner? I'll explain when you're older. Hawkeye. Oh, okay.